Hey there, welcome back to the vlog. So, in our house, much like in other people's homes, there is a division of responsibilities between me and my partner. Uh, you know, she's responsible for certain things, and I'm responsible for certain things, and it's quite often we will take over the thing that the other person doesn't know or is less competent at. Um, so, you know, I generally don't do the cooking because you know, it's not that I can't cook, it's just that hers is better. <laughs> And, you know, I normally do the cleaning and, uh, you know, other jobs like that. But also on top of that, there are certain responsibilities such as the first aid kit. Now, that one is on me. And it was actually, I was going through the first aid kit today, just double checking that there's nothing expired in there. And I came across something which I was like, you know what? I don't think I've ever done a video on this. And it's one of those curiosities that a lot of people wouldn't even consider having in their first aid kit. And that is a box of Radblock. Now, what this is, is potassium iodide. And there's a reason for it. So, I grew up in 1970s Britain, where we were bombarded on a regular basis with nuclear fallout, what to do in a nuclear war, what the sirens were going to sound like, if there was a fallout occurring, the free gongs, bangs, or whatever. <laughs> Next, the fallout warning. When fallout is expected, you will hear three bangs in short succession. They will be sounded by means of maroons like this. Or you may hear three gongs like this. Or three whistles like this. These all mean that fallout is expected. And, you know, that stuff was famously used by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Uh, if you listen to their music, you'll hear the same guy talking about, like, you know, what to do with your dead and everything else. And, you know, that was the uh, reality of 1970s Britain and 1980s Britain which is totally incongruous with what my wife was uh, growing up with. And, you know, in Canada, they, I, I'm not aware that they ever educated people en masse about, you know, what you do in the middle of a fallout. So, you know, certain things go around in my head that don't go around in her head. And as a result, that's why we have potassium iodide in our uh, first aid kit. Just literally because we are about 10 kilometers away from a nuclear facility, which is not a small one. And you know, statistically, the wind always blows in the opposite direction. There used to be, and I know this was taken down about 10 or so years ago at least, it could even be 15 years ago now, uh, but there used to be a map that the Environment Canada website uh, used to have, and Environment Canada like the weather people, actually they've changed name now, what are they, the Environment and Climate Change Canada? Anyway, they had a map that basically said, you know, statistically, if the way the wind blows, where was that fallout going to go? And... The short answer is New York. <laughs> like it yeah, blows up in Toronto, just blows all the way across, uh, you know, to New York City. And actually, it's those people that should be with these. Now, as a result of living close enough to a facility like this, there is a free program, um, which I, I, I don't think many people actually uh, even know that it existed, uh, let alone have ever used it. But basically, you know, as long as your uh, home or business is within a certain radius of such facilities, then, you know, you are legally allowed to get these tablets for free. Now, I was just checking the expiry date on these, and they don't expire until 2027. So, you know, we've got a few more years left on them yet. But, uh, you know, when they do expire, then as long as the law hasn't changed, then I'll just get another box. And so, you know, that way I'm always prepared. But the reason that this even entered my head was just literally from years and years of, you know, growing up with this stuff being drilled into us that, you know, there is this threat to our existence that if you don't prepare for it, you know, like the, the, the worst thing that can happen in a nuclear accident is, you know, you, number one, don't know what to do in a nuclear accident. And number two, you don't have things like these tablets already on hand because, you know, they're not going to quickly rush around getting this stuff out. 
there's very likely not a stockpile big enough to have everyone covered. So, you know, what you basically do as insurance is make sure you have your own stuff. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're good for about three days here. Uh, I think there's 20 tablets in this, which, you know, is long enough that if there is an evacuation or something like that, we're good. Now, the way this stuff works is when you have a nuclear accident, basically what happens is a whole bunch of you know, stuff gets thrown into the air. And among that stuff is going to be radioactive iodine. Now, this is uh, problematic. I mean, everything that goes up in a, a radioactive uh, cloud is going to be problematic. But there are different problems depending on what the substance is. And this addresses one of those. So the way this works is everybody has a thyroid gland, and thyroid uh, glands and iodine are, you know, they're, they're linked. The um, radioactive iodine that's in the cloud will basically get sucked up. You know, when you inhale it, it will get sucked up into your bloodstream. One thing leads to another. Next thing you know, it's accumulating over time in your thyroid. That can then later cause thyroid cancers and other issues, which, you know, are very, very nasty indeed. So... The stuff that lands on the outside, like you can wash that off with soap and water. Uh, you know, it's, it's not good to have it around you, but, uh, you know, at least you, you can sort of dust yourself off. And, you know, anybody that grew up in England will remember the, the whole thing about, like, you know, if you can't find shelter uh, within the 10 minutes of the fallout alarm, then basically, you know, if you're going to get covered in this stuff, like just take your outside layer of clothes off, dust yourself down and then go inside. So you're not bringing that stuff into whatever shelter you do happen to have. And I always remember there was a very sad guy that was out under the bridge. And you, you just knew that uh, you know, if there was a, a nuclear bomb or something going off in that area. If you cannot reach home in 10 minutes, Take cover in the nearest building. If there is no building nearby, try to find some solid cover. Basically, that guy was just going to die under the bridge. Then again, I guess a lot of people were just going to die anyway. I mean, we were told things like, you know, close your curtains. Because, I don't know, nuclear bombs can't go through curtains. <laughs> and draw curtains. Then go to your fallout room and stay there. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, you know, we were told certain things and, you know, some of that stuff sticks. So that's why we have it in our house. But as I said, like, I don't think a lot of people have ever even considered it. Even you know, if I was to you know, poll my neighbours around me, there would probably be like one or two percent has this stuff in their houses. It's just an afterthought for everybody else. Like nobody thinks about this stuff. And, you know, as I said, like you don't want to be panicking in an emergency trying to find it. Like, you need to have it long before the emergency uh, unfolds because, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that you need to have. So, anyway, that's it for today. I just wanted to, you know, just explain that this stuff's here and it exists. And I'll, I'll put the link. It's like get prepared or prepared to get prepared or something. Anyway, I'll put the link down here uh, for the, the website uh, for those at least that are in Canada where you can order this stuff. And, um, yeah. That's it for today. If you like them, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I will speak to you soon. Bye.